Hi everyone, this is going to be a swatch application and review video for Tati Beauty's first eyeshadow palette. It is the Textured Neutrals Volume 1. It did sell out after a little while and is now on pre-order, so you can still submit an order. I believe the company is seeing how big the demand is and then based off of that deciding how many more to produce and to then send out. So if you wanna see real swatches of these colors and you also want to see some of them applied to the lids, then this is the video for you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red subscribe button, follow Allure Beauty on Instagram, and if you didn't check out the latest video, that was for Huda Beauty's new Mercury Retrograde palette with swatches of that. I'll link that in the upper right hand corner for you to check out if you missed it. All right, let's get to reviewing Tati Beauty's very first eyeshadow palette. So as I mentioned, you can purchase this on pre-order through Tati Beauty website. It retails for $48. I will link in the description box below where you can find it, as well as a link to Ebates, so that if you do online shop, you can get cash back on most of your orders. In terms of the pre-order, uh, if you submit a pre-order, it says that there is a December restock and you are guaranteed to receive the shipping by December 15th. As for a description of the palette, it says this is an exclusive collection that includes 24 pans of thoughtfully crafted shadows and glitters developed by Tati Westbrook. Textured Neutrals Volume 1 introduces six monochromatic color stories featuring four new luxe textures and finishes. This universally flattering neutral palette begins with a row of prismatic glitters that cascade into shimmering metallics, sequin pinpoints, and ultra-rich creamy matte shadows. So just in terms of background, when I do these reviews, as with all my reviews on my channel, I do not have any sort of emotional tie or personal tie to the people or the figures behind these brands. I'm approaching this in a pretty sterile way in terms of just how the formula is, how the colors work, etc. So it says that for the glitters, that they are a unique pressed gel system that locks glitters in a cushiony base that glides on smoothly, never feels gritty for long lasting wear that won't flake. There's coconut oil in the formula to provide an extreme gloss and sparkle. For the metallics, it says gloss coated pearls glide effortlessly, creating a luminous metallic sheen that is easy to build and buildable for maximum impact. For the sequins formula, it says silky smooth, intense pigments with contrasting pearls suspended throughout to provide immediate color payoff. And then for the mattes, luxuriously rich and creamy matte shadows provide true color payoff with superior blending for all over color, shining and lining the eyes. And I don't see on the website any sort of special instructions on how to use any of these shades or formulas. Given that she seems to do basically all of her swatches with her fingers instead of with a brush, um, I won't be surprised if I will be doing multiple applications of specific shades for you with different application methods. So just stay tuned for that. So the palette is very simple and straightforward. It is a gray shade with um, bronzy, I would say, lettering for Tati Beauty, volume one and small lettering on the edge. It is made of cardboard. It closes by a magnet, opens up like this. You get a full size mirror in the top. And as you can see, you get um, rows and columns here. Interestingly, she has put for the rows, the top row is glitters, the second row is metallics, third row is her sequins formula, and the bottom row is matte. And then for the columns, um, I, she's put them into what I'm interpreting as color stories. So on the left here, you have memory, next is ritual, next is story, next is soothe, next is aura, and last is poet. Normally I would swatch by rows and part of me wants to do that because I kind of want to keep all the glitters together. They tend to be more difficult to remove and they tend to have particles that stick um, stubbornly to the skin and I don't want them to contaminate the other shades but on the other hand these are very clearly divided into color stories so I think for this one, I will go ahead and actually swatch these by column in their color stories. I'm crossing my fingers, hoping that that doesn't lead to very frustrating removal of these swatches. So I will, as I always do, apply these over 
a layer of eyeshadow primer. I will use a flat, dense eyeshadow brush. And this time I will swatch each column from top to bottom. Oh, and because these actually don't have individual shade names, we'll refer to them by their row and column. So first we will be doing the memory column. So I'll just refer to them by their finish, uh, knowing that all the shades that I'm talking about are right now in the memory column. So we'll start with the memory glitter first with a dry brush. This is described as a multi-dimensional smoky charcoal. I really like the fact that it applies pretty well with a brush. So I'm going to, if all of these maintain this level of application with a dry brush, I don't think we'll need to apply them any other way. You of course could apply them with your finger if you wanted to. Next is the metallic shade. This is a gun metal with silvery shimmer. I could tell when I was picking it up with a brush that may have not the best bright dry brush swatch. Seem to have a little bit of trouble transferring onto the brush, so I'll go ahead and swatch the shade with my finger. But before we do that, let's go ahead and apply a second layer. And this time I'll do a little bit more of a dabbing motion at first and then smooth it out. Next we'll apply the sequined shade. This is a carbon black with multicolored pinpoints. The colors that I can see are silver and um, this kind of purple shade and then the matte shade which is a carbon black. Let's move on to the second column. This is the ritual column, starting with the glitter shade. This is described as a multi-dimensional warm brown. This actually still goes on pretty well. Maybe not quite as densely as the first glitter shade. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more. This one is like a bronzy shade with silver and copper shimmer. Next is the Ritual Metallic shade, described as a chocolate bronze shimmer, followed by the Sequins shade. This is described as a rose brown, warm brown with gold pinpoints. And then the matte shade, described as a rich chocolate. Okay, so there are your first two columns. Let's see the first color story close. Followed by the next one. And then let's go ahead, just for consistency, I'll swatch the glitter and metallic shades in the memory column and then the glitter shade in the ritual column. Okay, applied with the fingers. Ooh, actually got kind of splotchy there. You might want to opt for the brush on that shade. Oh, but for the metallic shade. I think the finger application for that specific one is a lot nicer. Ooh, and for the glitter shade in the ritual column. I like that a lot better. So kind of zoomed out for comparison and then up close. Next we're swatching the glitter shade in the story column described as a multi-dimensional burnt orange. Again, applies very well with a dry brush. The metallic shade is next. This is a bright nectarine with gold shimmer. 
Next up is the sequined shade, burnt orange with gold pinpoints, and the matte shade, which is a burnt orange. Moving on to the Soothe column, starting with the glitter shade, multi-dimensional champagne gold. So I'm gonna go back to the prior column. The glitter shade here has, I can see, shimmer of like copperish gold and kind of like a really pale pink and silver. Next up is the metallic shade. Warm champagne gold shimmer. The sequined shade. Camel color with gold pinpoints. And the matte shade. Described as a camel shade. All right, there are the next two columns. All of these applied very well with just a dry eyeshadow brush. For consistency, let's apply the glitter shades, the finger swatches. Yeah, I think you actually get a smoother, less splotchy application with a dry brush. And when you're swiping them across the skin, you can definitely feel the grit of these larger metallic particles. And these are not technically eye safe. That's why this palette is called a pressed powder palette. It's not actually named an eyeshadow palette. Moving on to the Aura Row, starting with the glitter shade. This is a multicolored frosted champagne. I see glitter that is gold, green, maybe blue in there, maybe even some pinky shade. Next up is the metallic shade. This is a champagne shimmer, sequin shade. This is a vanilla with fuchsia pinpoints. And the matte shade, described as a vanilla color. And starting in the poet column with the glitter shade. This is a multi-dimensional frosted raspberry. metallic shade in the poet column. It's a soft ruby shimmer. Sequined shade. Cranberry with blue pinpoints. Love this unique combination there. And the matte shade is a cranberry color. All right, there are your last two columns. Up close. That blue and cranberry shade is very cool. And the last two glitter shades applied with the fingers. This row is very pliable, so just be careful. I think this one's my favorite glitter shade just because it really is so multi-dimensional. Again, I think brush swatches are better. All right, so there are the swatches of all of the colors. And here are my thoughts. There's no question that the shades in this palette have a fantastic formula, especially the mattes. They are so rich and buttery. And frankly, all the other shades are too. The only even slight hiccup with any of the shades was at the very beginning with that second shade that we swatched with a brush. Other than that, the formula is absolutely solid across the board on all of the shades. The glitter row, those are difficult to remove. Even when you use um, a makeup wipe, those glitter particles stick to the skin. They are stubborn, so just be aware of that. And at the end of the day, as it is very clearly advertised, it doesn't pretend to be anything else, this is a neutrals palette. I guess you could argue the first and last columns, the bluish shades and the more cranberry shades are a little bit off center when it comes to neutrals, but 
really this is a neutrals palette. So if you are in the market for a neutrals palette, there is nothing that will disappoint you about the quality of this one. Of course, you are probably someone who owns a lot of neutral makeup, neutral eyeshadows. So then the question becomes, well, are you gonna purchase the palette anyway because you want to support Tati? And for a lot of people that is the case, even if they have plenty of neutral palettes because they like the person behind the brand, they wanna support that person, especially when it in and of itself is a great product, they will want to purchase the product to support them. If you are not someone who falls in that category where, yeah, you have some neutrals palettes and you aren't a huge follower of Tati's, then I guess the question just becomes, is the price point right for you? And in this case, it is $48 and you get 24 shades. So each pan is $2. And I think that given the quality of each of the pans, $2 is an absolutely fair price. So unless there's some other thing that doesn't fit your preference, for example, some people absolutely never use glitters, whether it's because they're not technically eye safe and you don't wanna run that risk, or you're just a person who doesn't ever use um, such glittery formulas, that would eliminate an entire row for you. And then maybe the palette is not worth the money because you know you're not gonna use any of those top shades or some other factor excluding those situations. I think that you will be very happy with this purchase if you decide to buy the palette. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know in the comment section below what thoughts you have. I hope that you enjoyed watching these swatches and it helped you make a decision one way or the other if you were gonna purchase this. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch. Please stay tuned for upcoming videos, including swatches of the new Shane Conspiracy palettes when they arrive, and I'll see you in the next video.